Trust me with your, with your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your holy, precious name. Now, we know the name of the Lord is Joshua, but there's no sin in calling his name in English. Whatever language you speak, call his name every chance you get. Don't miss an opportunity to call his name because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. We thank God for another Friday, another Sabbath. We give God glory. We are taking this day to rest and we're taking this day to spend with God. Isn't it nice that God created the heavens and the earth? And then he created man last. And then he saved the day. He saved one specific day for that man to take off from all of his work and worship God. God took a day that he would like to commune, 24 hours that he would like to commune and have fellowship. And that's what we're doing on every Sabbath. We're taking time to commune with God and spend some time with him. And, and, and today is a perfect day to do that. If you have not given your life to the Lord, today is a good day to give your life to the Lord. We don't know how much time we have left on this earth. Tomorrow is not promised. And while you have blood running warm in your veins, this is the perfect time to give God your life. Give God your life. Is there a spiritual realm? Is there a spiritual realm or is there a physical realm only? Is heaven a physical place or is heaven a spiritual place? Is heaven a place that you can physically go to? Were the people that was building the Tower of Babel, were they trying to get to a physical place? If they were going to a non-physical place, if it was impossible for them to get into heaven and they had the goal of taking over and, and, and shooting arrows at God, if it was a, a place that's not physical, then what sense does it make for God to stop what he's doing come down to earth, change their languages, if it was impossible for them to do it. He would have just said, okay, go ahead. Y'all wanna come up here? There's no up here. But what if it is a physical place? What if it is a place that they were building a massive tower to go to? If we, if we were to understand Hebrew cosmology, we would have a clear understanding that we don't have to have a spiritual realm. A spiritual realm is only necessary if you're using non-Hebrew cosmology. When you go to Isaiah 6, 6, there's a lot of scriptures. Sometimes it, they, it makes a lot more sense if you have the foundation. Then flew one of the seraphims. A seraphim is a class or a different type of angels. He said, it flew unto me having a live coal in his hand. When he had taken with the tongues from off of the altar. If you read the previous verses, you'll find out that he took a um, hot coal from off of the altar and he brought it. Did he bring it and touch Isaiah's uh, physical mouth or was this a spiritual thing? When we read scriptures in the Bible, if it if it if it if you think it's a spiritual thing, then what does these all of these scriptures do? I'm going to take my time and I'm going to show you a few scriptures. I want you to tell me what you think. In First Chronicles 21:15, we know this is when King David had messed up and he decided that he's going to count um, the Israelites, and God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. Is this a physical angel, or is this a spiritual angel? Well, let's see. And as he was destroying, the Lord looked and repented of this evil and said to the angel that destroyed, it's enough. Stop what you're doing. Now, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor. The angel of the Lord stood in a physical place, not in a spiritual place. This is a physical place on earth. And we know that when that angel stood at that physical place on earth, the Bible says in the next verse, I don't have time to go through each verse. I'm just giving you the verses. You could take these and you can go and read them. The, the Bible says that David saw him standing there. Did he see a spiritual angel? Did he see into the spiritual realm? Or did he see a physical angel standing there? When we get to Genesis, if we look at Genesis chapter uh, 32, verse 25, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, this is Jacob, this is Jacob um, wrestling with an angel. He touched, the angel did, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. Was that a spiritual joint? Was that a spiritual angel pushing his physical hip out of socket? You see how it gets weird? Or is it just a physical angel pushing his physical thigh out of socket? The Bible says he wrestled with him. Well, did he wrestle with a spiritual angel? Or did he wrestle with a physical angel? Now, when we go to the next um, chapter here, in Genesis 19, we see the same thing. And the Bible says, and there came two angels to Sodom at the even, six o'clock in the evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, 
So are the did Lot go into the spiritual realm? Is Lot now spiritual? Is there a spiritual realm necessary? Or did Lot physically see these two angels? Okay, let's go to Acts in the 12th chapter. And the Bible says, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. This is when Peter was in jail. And a light shined in the prison. This is a physical place on earth. This is Peter in physical prison. The Bible says, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up. Was that a physical angel raising up physical Peter in a physical jail? Or was Peter somehow transformed over into a spiritual realm in order to deal with an angel? And he said unto her, what form is he of? We know that uh, Samuel, he messed up. I'm sorry, Saul messed up and he went to the witch of Endor. And I do believe this is where the concept, this is where the concept of the um, spiritual realm came from. We know that Saul went to the witch of Endor, which he was not supposed to do. We know that Samuel was already dead and Saul wanted to speak to Samuel because God stopped talking to him. I do believe this is where the spiritual realm concept came from, but I want you to watch this. And he said, he asked her because she said she saw him coming from the ground. And he asked her, okay, what form is he of? And she said, an old man is coming and he's covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, okay? And he stooped with his face to the ground and he bowed himself to him. He's trying to say, okay, Saul, uh, Samuel, sorry for bothering you, I have a question. And Samuel said to Saul, why does it say he said to Saul? Was Samuel in the spiritual realm? Or are you going to force Samuel out of the spiritual realm into the physical realm? There's a lot of forcing here, or we can just take before what the Bible says. Samuel. Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed. And then he goes on and he explains to him why he brought him up. So I do believe that's where it came from. But when we go all the way to Revelation, we have a clear understanding of what heaven looks like because John, the revelator, God showed him heaven. He took him to heaven. And when he opened the fit seal, I saw under the altar the souls. He saw the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. All right. That makes sense until you get here. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true? How was he able to hear them say this? Does not, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So I think also this is where people get the concept. Okay, he said he's talking to, to God about people on earth. So I think this is where people get that idea from, well, he must not also be on earth. Is it possible that a physical heaven could be physically attached to earth? If that's, if that's the case, then we have to throw out everything that we've been taught before and just stick with the Bible. Genesis 4.10, and he said, what has thou done? This is God talking to Cain. And God is telling Cain, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. If we went back, you would say this is in the spiritual realm here when these voices under the altar which was which were slain, these are the souls that were slain, you would say that this is a, a spiritual place. But here, when you go to Genesis, the Bible says that sound that is coming from the ground. Why wouldn't that sound be coming from a spiritual place, a spiritual realm, or from heaven, or amongst those in the altar, unless it's literally doing just like God says, coming from the ground. Even though Abel is dead, he's crying, his soul is crying from the ground. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth and another angel went out to meet him. Okay, Judges 13, 21. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. So here he's talking to a person, a physical person that isn't actually an angel. He, if, if you believe that angels are some spiritual beings that you can see sometimes in a dream, or they're invisible. Why did he not know that this was an angel that he was talking to? Why is it that sometimes afterwards you realize, oh, that was an angel? Because the Bible says that sometimes we entertain angels and don't even know it because angels look just like us. And when uh, Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, see, why didn't he know that before? Then he says, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. Did, did, nowhere here can you make this scripture take Gideon out of earth and put him into some spiritual realm. You don't have to do that. He saw an angel face to face. Okay. When we go to, and, and maybe you want to try to say that angels come in and out of the spiritual realm. You don't have to do that for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians 
And when he see the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer, watch this, the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. I don't believe that if this was a spiritual angel, he would have to come in your house to kill you. God doesn't need to come in to your house to kill you. God doesn't need to send an angel into your house to kill you. But if it's a physical angel physically killing the Egyptian sons, that makes a lot more sense. If he sees the blood, he's seeing a physical blood. He, it, it's all physical. Daniel 10, 5 says, I lifted up my eyes, not a dream, his eyeballs. And he looked with his eyeballs and he behold, watch this word, a certain man. Okay, this man was clothed in, in nice clothes and he had a, a, a golden belt on. Okay. Then Daniel said that person's body, that man body was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning. So we know this is an angel and eyes as lamps of fire. His arms and feet had the color of brass. That's important. So and Daniel is seeing a physical angel that has a physical body. Okay. When we go to Luke, who was that angel that went to, um, to Mary? And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art hardly flavored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. The angel came in unto her. And when she saw him, she saw him. She wasn't dreaming. She didn't go into a spiritual realm. She saw this angel. Okay. If you don't understand Hebrew cosmology, you are forced to create a spiritual realm, which is not necessary to explain the location of heaven. But if heaven is a physical place that the Nimrod and the whole earth was gathered together, building this, this um, tower to get to God. If they were going to a physical place without a spacesuit, without a spacecraft, if they're going to a physical place, then God would have to do something physical to stop them from doing that. And once again, if they were going to a spiritual heaven, that they, how do you get there? How do you build a tower to go to a spiritual heaven? And we look at these pyramids and we see that the stars are aligned at certain times of the day, I'm sorry, at a night, certain months, where the lights shine through at the right exact time down to a chamber way down in the basement of the pyramid. These stars are in the same place every year. And it's been in the same place. That star that you gazed at in your mother's backyard when you were a child will be in the same place on the same day next year. It's the same place this year. The same stars in the same place. What if heaven is a physical, literal place? If heaven is a spiritual place, then I need to talk to you about New Jerusalem. Is that a spiritual Jerusalem coming down with 12 gates? Is that a spiritual Jerusalem coming down with, with foundations and walls? Is that a spiritual place or is that a physical place? Because God took six days to create and he listed everything that he created. So I need to know, I need you to show me on which day did he create a whole spiritual realm. And don't say the day that he created the heaven, because if he created a spiritual heaven and we see physical angels, how did he put physical angels in a spiritual heaven? It doesn't make sense. If he created a physical earth and the Bible says the earth is his footstool and you created a physical heaven that rests and is attached to a physical earth, then it makes sense that you have physical angels in the physical heaven. And we know God is also physical because we saw him. Go to John 1, 14. We see here that the Bible says the word was made flesh. This is in the beginning. This is God who became flesh. God became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. We saw it. People saw God. They looked at him according to the scripture. You can't change that. Then we go to John 20, verse 26. The Bible says, and we know that we call him Doubting Thomas for a reason. Thomas says, I will never believe, I'm not going to believe that Jesus rose from the grave unless I can see the uh, nails in his hand and see the hole in his side. This is Jesus who's already dead. The Bible says eight days later, Thomas showed up and Jesus with the doors being shut, he stood in the midst of them. How did he get in there? You don't have to have a whole spiritual realm because you have a, a physical or a spiritual being either. 
So yes, Jesus can walk through doors and eat food and eat fish and say, peace be unto you. How did he get in there? The doors were shut and they're pointing that out for a reason. He then said to Thomas, take your finger, uh, wait, reach thy, hither thy finger, bring your finger and look at my hands. Then he said, take your hand and put it in my side. So Thomas saw the hole, he touched the hole, he put his hand in his side and he touched his side. So how did he get in there? How did that happen? You don't have to create a whole spiritual realm to make your doctrine work. You can just go along with what the Bible says. It's really easy to do that. There's, were there physical angels with flame, physical flaming swords guarding a physical garden of Eden? We know that the Bible gives the exact location of the Garden of Eden. It tells you exactly where those rivers are. You can go on the map and look it up right now. We see where the Garden of Eden was. There were physical angels standing to protect a physical garden, to protect a physical tree of life. This is, this is not a spiritual place. So if there were physical angels guarding the physical Garden of Eden, when God brings the new Jerusalem back and puts it in the same exact spot, I know you think you're gonna float off to heaven. And I know you believe that there's a, a place in the sky that you're gonna live and, and, and never return. There's a song that says, I won't be back no more, no more, no more. But the Bible says the angels saw and they said, look, he's going to tabernacle with men. When the Lord brings new Jerusalem, heaven down to earth, God is going to dwell with us on earth. If you're going to a heaven, then you'll be there without God because he'll be here on earth in a physical Jerusalem. That's your goal. And I do realize there's some things that I'm going to talk about from, from this day forward. I had to cover this, otherwise everything I'm gonna talk about makes no sense. When we start talking about end times, when we start getting into prophecy, we, we gotta get rid of this, this doctrine where you're gonna float off into space, you're gonna be drop all your clothes here. You, we, we have to realize what God is, is warning us to do. God is warning us to be prepared to go to a physical place. We're going to a physical Jerusalem that does not change. Why do we need I mean, a spiritual heaven if we have a physical new Jerusalem that he describes? He even told them to measure it. We're measuring, a, you can't measure a spiritual place. He told him, if you look up the measurements, it's 1,500 I mean, sorry, no. miles square. It's talking about gates and it's talking about pearls and foundations. You need a foundation for a physical place. This is not a spiritual place. Now, Daniel 12, one says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been seen, sorry, such as never was seen. There was a nation even to that same time. And at that same time, that people shall be delivered. Everyone that was found written in the book. There is a time of trouble that's coming. And this is why you need a spiritual leader that's hearing from God and has the heart of the people to warn the people, this God is coming back, he's fierce, he's a lion, he's not coming back as a lamb, he's not coming back for you to rip his beard out of his face, you will not be able to put a thorn, crown of thorns on his head, you're not gonna be able to spit in his face, you're not gonna be able to punch him, you're not gonna be able to stab him, he's coming back as a lion with destruction and with judgment, and God is giving us instructions now to prepare for his return, and the saints of God have to know when it's time to move, when it's time to pray, when it's time to do whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing at that, at that specific time. And if you have a, a, a bad understanding and think that there's a spiritual realm that you have to die and get to, then you're not going to understand and you're going to miss out on exactly what it is that God is, is warning us and, and trying to tell us to do. When you go to verse two, it says, and many of them that's asleep in the dust of the earth, because I know that we think that these, when you when your loved one dies, that they go up to heaven because they make us feel good. The Bible says they're asleep. Where are they sleep? In heaven? Where are they sleep? In the dust of the earth? They're sleep in the dust of the earth. They shall awake and then go into everlasting life. The ones that have given their life to the Lord. That's why it says, and some to shame and some to everlasting contempt. I want to be ready I, when God comes. I want to live my life so that I'm ready when he comes and I can get up if I'm dead from the earth. Now, what sense does it make if someone dies and goes to a spiritual heaven, they would then have to be placed back into earth for this scripture to work so that they can then get up because the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
What, if, what, what sense does it make? God is coming back to take a, a person and put them in the grave and then rise them up. It just doesn't make sense when we start looking at it that way. When we go to Daniel 2, 44, it says, and in those days, I'm sorry, in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. This is New Jerusalem. This is his, his, his uh, bride. This is us. This is the people that's going to give their life to the Lord. God is setting this up. He says, which shall never be destroyed. So we know this hasn't happened yet. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people because God is going to give this kingdom, the one that it will last forever to one people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. This is physical. This is not spiritual. This is the real heaven. The heaven that you've seen on TV, the heaven that's in comic books, that doesn't work with this scripture. This is a literal thing on earth. This is a literal thing that's going to happen here. This is not a spiritual place in the sky somewhere. This is why we have to stop worrying about a spiritual realm. There's a reason why we have to stop worrying about a, 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 a fake heaven in the sky. God is bringing heaven here. We need to worry about this world instead of a spiritual world. We need to worry about this realm instead of trying to make a spiritual realm so that you can be ready when the Lord comes so you can go with him. And the Bible tells us that, that New Jerusalem is heaven, but the Bible tells us that, that it's physical and it's not natural. And the Bible tells us what to do. We should be ready when the Lord comes. And this is how we get ready. We got to stop worrying about the Bible says, and therefore be not curious. Stop trying to figure out how the ungodly should be punished. So that's telling us right there that we can't just worry. We talked about heaven all this time, but we can't, we were about a, a, a hell either. Don't worry about that. Don't try to go to hell. Give your life to the Lord. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get baptized in Jesus' name. Don't worry about uh, go, uh, who's going to go to hell. Just make sure you're not a part of that crowd. Make sure you're part of the crowd that's going to the new Jerusalem. So the Bible says, be not curious how the ungodly shall be punished or when it's going to happen. The Bible says, inquire, ask questions, try to figure out, search the scriptures on how the righteous shall be saved. That's what we should be doing. When we're creating different places and, and heaven and hells that, that we can't physically uh, phantom in our mind because we're using our carnal minds. And since our carnal minds are limited, we can't understand it. The Bible is telling you how you should even think. Worry about this, the righteous and how the righteous should be saved and make sure that you're righteous. Who's the world is? The world is for the righteous, not heaven. Did you catch that? So here we're talking about the ungodly being punished. So we know we're talking about the time that the world has passed that we currently know. We're talking about a time when there's heaven and when there's hell. So here, when we're talking about hell and we're talking about heaven, the Bible says, don't worry about a physical heaven, a hell or a physical heaven. Don't worry about the ungodly. Don't worry about the unsaved. God is saying, I want you to worry about who the world that's coming is for. There's a world that's coming and that's not a heaven somewhere in the sky, out in space somewhere. This world is where we're going to be. And the Bible says, and whom the world is created. The world is created for the righteous and God is going to restore this world back to the righteous. I really appreciate you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. All of you, thank you all for coming. I will be back on Tuesday and then I will be back on Friday. Do you guys have any questions? Let me know now. If you have a question, you can type that in the chat, whatever you're watching from. If you're watching from Covenant Sermons, our online church, you can go ahead and type that in. We will get your question. If you need prayer, you can do that now. If you have any questions about anything that we covered, if anyone here has a question about anything we covered, I know this is deep, but when I start next week going deep into um, prophecies, it won't make sense if you think I'm talking about going to a spiritual place. Heaven is going to be here. We're going to, God is going to get what he wanted. God wanted a relationship with man. So he created an earth and a garden. He put man in it. He created a Sabbath day so that he can have time to spend with man. And God is going to get what he created. The devil is not going to be able to rob God of his desires. God is going to get and do all of his pleasure. God will have a time where he has fellowship with man on this earth that he created and for that purpose. The only alternative to that is to say that the devil came in, messed up all of God's plan. God will never get what he wanted. Oh God, that's too bad for you. I brought sin into the world. Now you can't have the world. Now you can't have fellowship with mankind. So then God has to have a heaven. So for everybody to go to and forget about uh, earth anymore, I'm just going to blow that up or something. That was a bad idea. It didn't work out. That sounds, that sounds right to you? No. 
God will have earth. Earth will be destroyed. I mean, re be restored back to the place that God wanted it to be originally. And he will have fellowship with mankind. The Bible says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So now we know that the Bible is 100% clear that the dead is here. The dead is going to leave here and then the dead is going to go to a new Jerusalem that the Bible says John saw it come from heaven. He saw it fall down into earth. That's where we're going. That is heaven. God will be there. The Bible says there will be no need for a sun. There will be no need for a moon because God will be the light of that city. So that's heaven. That's our goal. And we, we have to be prepared for that. Thank you all for coming. If anyone has any questions, you can let me know. If you are on our church channel, you can um, type any questions up to 15 minutes afterwards. Appreciate you all for coming. Please meet me back here on uh, Friday nights. Next Friday, we'll be having our Passover service. I kind of took this month off a little bit to do a little bit of teaching. We're going back to praising God and lifting up his name. And we're going into the enemy's camp and we're going to destroy some demons. We're going to talk next week about the Passover. The Passover is extremely important. We just read what happened if you're not prepared for the Passover. Next week, uh, I believe it'll be April 8th next week. Then every week after that, I'm going to be dealing with the deity of God. I'm going to be dealing with how uh, Jesus is God. As a matter of fact, I'm going to point out how Jesus created God. So we have to talk about how God got destroyed, how his body got destroyed on earth, what purpose he had for coming here. We're going to go into detail about all the stuff that he had to suffer. There's things that he had to suffer that the movie, The Passion of the Christ, does not cover. That's just his physical pain. But what about him being betrayed? What about him feeling afraid? What about him being scared and cold? And wet? what about all the emotional damage, his mental health? What about all of that? We're going to talk about all that throughout um, April and come May. May, I am looking for God to, to move in a mighty way. We're looking for God to have his, um, the first uh, week of May, we're going to talk about how to get the Holy Ghost. If you go to our um, YouTube channel right now, you'll see that I put all of the um, messages coming up in order in May, all the way almost till June. And we're going to we're asking for anybody who is looking for God to fill them with the Holy Ghost to be right here at seven o'clock every Friday, every Friday. We have diaspora teaching. That's the members only. We would love for you to become a, a covenant servant. Let me know if you're interested. We, you need a spiritual covering. You need somebody that's praying for you. You need a pastor. You need a spiritual person that can show you the signs of the times that can break down scriptures for you. No one should be out here on their own. God is always speaking to his to a man of God, and that man of God gives direction to his people. That's how we set it up for Moses. That's how it will always remain. See you all next Friday. Mm -hmm.